Um, so I am Dr. Shashank Prabhu. Um, I am uh, an alumnus of FMS Delhi. Uh, before that, I have done my MBBS from Grand Medical College. So all those non-engineers who are struggling with their CAT preparation, uh, if there is something that, uh, some inspiration that you need from somewhere, uh, this, this is basically it, right? Um, so uh, I used to uh, take sessions for Quant and LRDI uh, with IMS uh, students. Presently, I'm in a different role, but uh, yeah, so I have been associated with CAT since a long time, right? Since 2009, I believe, so 14 years. I have been associated with CAT uh, as an aspirant, as a mentor, uh, as someone who is involved with content and preparation, right? So all those things I've been involved in various capacities. And that's basically why I'm sitting here, right? Uh, to share uh, my experiences and the kind of um, stories I have, I have gathered uh, over all these years, right? So... We'll get going with the with the uh, session. Uh, I see uh, quite a few will have joined us. So at any point in time, if you have a query uh, which is pertinent to this slide, something that uh, you feel should be added or something that you feel uh, needs to be answered at that point in time, you can just put it in the chat box, right? So uh, the chat is open to all of you. So you can put your query in the chat box and uh, I'll try to accommodate as many queries as I can. Uh, obviously, this is just the sort of beginning of the season for a lot of you. Uh, so there will be a lot of different uh, avenues uh, wherein your queries will be addressed, right? So um, if there is something that I've not been able to understand, please let me know. So there are four things uh, or four parts to this session. The session is going to go on for more or less an hour, right? So uh, that is basically okay. Okay. All right. So I'll be getting some queries. I'll, I'll try to answer those, right? Going ahead. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll start with a short story. Um, I, I hope some of you know this story already. For those of you who don't know this story, maybe it will give you some insight into what preparation can look like. Uh, the second thing is we'll talk about what act, uh, what exactly happened at the CAT 2022. I also have a slide on CAT 21 and the marks versus percentile. So that will help you set benchmarks. Of course, CAT 22 uh, was difficult compared to CAT 21 and uh, whatever data that we have gathered over the last couple of days since the uh, official um, response sheet came out uh, has suggested that the test was significantly difficult uh, compared to last year's test. So we'll talk about that bit as well. Then we'll come to the actual session, seven lessons from CAT 2022. Uh, I should spend roughly four to five minutes on each lesson. So that will essentially be half an hour, 35 minutes kind of a, a flow. And then we will have roughly five to 10 minutes of Q&A. Now, you will also have one to many my plan sessions, uh, mostly with Prasad, sir. So um, there you will get clarity in terms of your timetable, in terms of your profile building, in terms of your uh, chances and percentiles required, SIM card analysis. So all those things will be taken care of in those sessions. Uh, your, so your profile evaluation and all, I will not be able to talk about that bit. Uh, so that that is basically uh, something that we will have to wait and figure out at a later point in time, right? So let's get going with the uh, session. So a very, very simple story. It's a very quick story that I will talk about. And um, this is regarding uh, a bamboo tree, right? Uh, so all of you would have seen or at least heard of bamboo trees at some point in time. It basically looks like what the image shows you, right? Now, uh, Trivia is that uh, bamboo trees or bamboo shoots are the tallest shoots uh, in the plant kingdom, so to say, right? They grow up to heights of, you can say, 80, 90 feet, right? So they, they grow to very tall sizes, right? They, they become, they, they grow to very uh, huge, um, you can say, heights, right? So that is basically what it looks like. Now, uh, the story is there is a person. And um, this person basically gets his hands on a bamboo seed. And he has been told that in uh, roughly five years, this bamboo seed, when planted, will give rise to a shoot, a tree, which will be 80, 90 feet tall. Right. So that is basically what the promise is. And this person basically goes and plants this seed in soil. Right. Uh, and after two, three months of putting fertilizers, watering it every day, taking care of the soil, preventing it from pests, preventing it from cattle, right? This, this person guards this particular thing with his heart, right? And uh, doesn't let go of this thing at all. After three months, four months, 
doesn't see anything. There is not even a blade of grass. There is nothing that comes out of it, right? Um, like, okay, five five years is what I was promised. Let's wait for some time. Keeps on doing things. After six months, eight months, he looks at it. Still, there is not even a single bit of grass that has come out. After a year, he still keeps on watering things, right? And nothing comes out. Now he starts getting worried. Have I been sold a dummy seed? Was um, a fake promise being made to me? Am I not doing things correctly? Now there begins this self-doubt all a bit. But then he keeps persisting with the Sharad because he has been promised something is going to happen. After two years, nothing happens. After three years, nothing happens. This person has been watering it incessantly for three years now, three and a half years now. Nothing comes out, right? Um, almost five years pass by and nothing has happened by the way till five years no grass or shoot has appeared and you have been promised 90 feet you have always thought that okay 90 divided by 5 18 feet per year that is basically going to be the height of the tree after every year but no averages have been trashed it doesn't work mathematically after roughly five years you can see a small blade of grass coming out of it right and within three months, the bamboo she the bamboo tree, the bamboo shoot grows to the promised height of 1890. Now, the moral of the story is what was happening over these four or five years, right? The thing that was happening over these four or five years is that the tree was developing roots. Now, if you have to have a structure which is so tall, it has to have a nice foundation as well, right? Unless you develop that foundation, if you straight away rise to 1890 feet, then it's going to be disastrous. Right? And that is basically what it was sort of safeguarding itself against. Right? Now, uh, that is basically what happens in terms of a preparation. As well. Unless you develop a strong foundation, unless you have good habits, uh, you will never be able to translate your potential into your catch. And a lot of people uh, flounder when it comes to these things. Right? A lot of people have a lot of potential, but then somehow it goes wasted. Purely because you didn't build the foundation properly. Right? You kept on jumping from one thing to the other. And that is basically what led to disaster. So the model of the story is develop your foundation first. You have a lot of time on hand. Make sure that you get into the right habits. You build muscle memory. You develop those kind of automatic responses that you will get as soon as you are presented with a question. And that should take care of most of the things. Right. So muscle memory you have is something that you have to develop. Now, in terms of CAT 22 overview, uh, there were three sections as has been the case since 2015. So over the last eight years, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, eight years now, the test has comprised of three sections, right? The first section is the verbal ability reading comprehension section, wherein it's, it's English in a way, right? The second section is LRDI, logical reasoning, data interpretation. And the third section is Quantitative ability, QA or math, as we know. Uh, this year, if you look at it, or last couple of years, the pattern has been consistent. There have been 24 questions from VARC, 20 questions from LRDI, out of which 10 questions were logical reasoning based questions, meaning that they were mostly based on inter interpreting uh, the data, or the, uh, based on your reasoning skills, right? Uh, so I, I have a small confession here LR and DI are basically similar. Logical reasoning is interpreting data and interpreting data is logical reasoning. Uh, but when it comes to analysis of tests, logical reasoning essentially means those arrangement kind of sets, uh, basically, wherein you don't have to calculate anything, you have to place things. And the data interpretation essentially means some element of number crunch, right? So 10 questions or two sets were from LR this year, two sets, 10 questions were from DI, five questions per set. That is what it looked like. I missed it in the VARC part. Reading comprehension consisted of 16 questions out of the 24 questions in the section and eight questions were from verbal ability. So RCs will mean that there will be a 500, 600 word passage followed by four questions and we'll have four such passages. VA on the other hand can again be split into three parts. So for all of all those of you who are aware of the pattern, it will just be a recap. Uh, there were three questions this year from jumbled paragraphs, wherein four sentences would be given to you. And you will have to rearrange those four sentences to form a logically coherent paragraph. Then there were another couple of questions based on paragraph summary, wherein there will be uh, two uh, sub or three questions rather based on paragraph summary, wherein they'll be given passages uh, comprising of 150-ish words, 150-200 or 100-150-ish words. 
and you will have to summarize those passages uh, or four alternative summaries will be given to you and you will have to figure out which summary uh, or which of these four options summarizes the passage in the best possible manner without loss of context. So that was basically the paragraph summary question type. And this year there was a surprise. There were a couple of questions that were based on fill in the blanks or you can say paragraph completion, meaning there was a paragraph given to you. There was one sentence that was removed from that paragraph and kept outside. And there were four blanks or four potential places where these, where this particular sentence could have been inserted. You have to figure out which is the best possible place where that sentence will go. So that was the surprise element this year when it came to the cap. Right? So that is the VERC section, LRDI already discussed. Quad is straightforward, 22 questions, all standalone questions. So you will not have sets, right? Uh, you will have one question or each question will be independent of the other questions. So 22 such questions were there. Now this year we had 49 MCQs plus three minus one marking scheme for every correct answer plus three incorrect answer minus one. 17 questions were TETA and how they were uh, spread. Uh, you basically had uh, three TETA questions in uh, verbal. You had six TETA questions in LRDI and you had uh, eight TETA questions in quad, right? So that was basically the split of those TETA questions. TETA questions essentially are the questions wherein you have to type in the answer, TITA. Um, so there are no negative marking or there is no negative marking for this question type and for every correct answer, you get a plus three. Right? And there were 40 minutes given to you for every section and you had to attempt the sections in the given order. So you had to attempt verbal first, followed by uh, DILR, followed by what? So that is basically how it went. Right. Uh, Dinesh, the number of TETA questions in each section. So verbal ability this year had uh, three TETA questions. So all three jumbled paragraphs were TETA. DILR had six TETA questions. So three plus six, nine. And eight questions out of 22 were TETA in quant. So the split was three, six, eight. And in DILR as well, I think uh, in my slot, uh, one set had no TETA questions, one set had one, one set had two, one set had three. So zero, one, two, three. So uh, CAT 2021 is what I wanted to uh, mention. It's 2022, so just ignore this one. Uh, so this is basically the score versus percentile for last year's CAT, right? Uh, so last year, if you would have scored a 60 out of 198, then you would have scored a 90th percentile. If you would have scored a 97 out of 198, you would have scored a 99th percentile. These are all uh, roughly scaled scores that you got, right? If you look at it at a sectional level, VARC 80 percentile is 22 marks, LRDI is 15 marks, QA is 12 marks, right? And this 22 is out of 72, the rightmost column, 15 out of 60, 12 out of 66, right? So if you look at it roughly, you can say 25 to 30 percent marks. And in case of uh, quant last year, less than 20 percent marks, even if that would, uh, was something you would have scored, you would have still hit an 80 percentile at a sectional level, right? So this is basically what it says. Two major milestones that I have written here, 90 percentile and 99 percentile. 90 percentile was at 60 last year, right? And 60 is essentially slightly less than one third, right? 99 percentile was at 97, which is again slightly less than half. Right. So we basically look at these numbers. So if you score one fourth of the total marks, chances are very high that you will be at roughly 80 to 85 percent. If you score one third of the total marks, you will be somewhere around the 90th percentile. And if you score half of the total marks, you will be somewhere around the 99th percentile. This year, however, again, I'm not talking about scale scores. I'm talking about absolute scores. The 99 percentile at this point in time, when it comes to raw scores, will be somewhere around 80 to 90 marks, depending on the section that you took the test, right? So it was slightly more difficult, as I mentioned earlier. So this is basically what we have. This is the benchmark that you have to target. So come your first SIMCAT, uh, it would be great if you are in that situation wherein you are getting one third of the total marks, right? So if you are at 90 percentile already at that point in time, that is basically something that will give you a lot of confidence when you're starting with the preparation. Right. Yeah. Uh, MCQ and TETA questions vary every year. So yeah, CR7, it, it varies every year. So last year we had a couple of questions on uh, odd sentence out, which were TETA, which did not, uh, which were not TETA this year. So that happens, right? This session is not for people who have taken CAT this year. Uh, this session is for people who have taken CAT this year and intend to, or uh, taken CAT this year and intend to take it next year, or people who are intending to take it next. Year. So it's for 23 aspirants mostly.
Yeah. So the first lesson that we are talking about today is that you have to think smart. Now, when I say smart, uh, that is basically an acronym that stands for something. So if you get into say project management at some point in time, right, you will, you will hear this acronym at a lot of places, right? Um, so you have to always think smart, right? Yeah. Okay. So you have to, you have to be smart about the preparation. So you already saw the numbers, you got an idea as to what it takes to crack the cat. So as I said, 25%, 33%, 50% are your friends here. One fifth, uh, sorry, one fourth, one third, half, right? Now, that is basically what we are looking at in this particular context. You always have to prepare with a purpose, right? Now, if you do not have a purpose and your or your purpose is not exactly something that is based on solid ground, solid research, then it's going to not be sustainable, honestly, right? Because there will come a point in time wherein you will get frustrated with your preparation. You will feel that you are doing everything that you can, but then again, you are not being able to translate it into marks. So when I mentioned the bamboo tree story, I spoke about how nothing happened after one year, nothing happened after two years, three years, and so on. Right? That happens in a lot of situations in life. right? Let's say, for example, you plan to lose weight. Let's say, right? There might be a scenario wherein, let's say, you have nappily planned to lose 5 kg over 5 months, let's say for example, right? At the end of one month, you expect to lose 1 kg because average tells us that 5 kg, 5 months, 1 kg per month, right? We're all good at basic math at least, right? So we want to lose 1 kg every month. Now, the funny thing is, after a month, there is a very realistic possibility that you might have lost 500 grams. After the end of two months, there is a very realistic scenario that you might have lost, cumulatively lost, say 1 kg. Right. So you are behind average. Now the gap between the average that you are thought of and the actual thing that is happening is termed as the value of disappointment. Right. And whenever you get into this value of disappointment, wherein things are not happening at the pace that you think they should be happening, you are bound to question your foundation. Right. You will start thinking about whether that bamboo seed was original or not, whether you have been doing it correctly or not, whether you have been cheated, whether the information given to you is incorrect or something. Right. You will start doubting yourself. And that is basically where your purpose will come into the picture. So you have to prepare with a purpose and only then will it be sustainable. Right. So when I say smart goals, that smart stands for S-M-A-R-T. So specific, measurable, achievable or attainable relevant and time bound meaning your goal should be very specific in it and when i say specific it doesn't mean i want to get into i am amdabad right it has to be again it has to be achievable it has to be relevant to the context right uh, it's it's very good to have a goal of getting into i am amdabad but you should also have the profile uh, going ahead you should also think about what makes you get into i am amdabad right it could be good mock scores so you have to always work backwards and look at a goal which you can attain at a time bound or in a uh, de dedicated time frame, you can say, right? So that is basically what we are looking at at this point in time. So getting into I'm Ahmedabad is the last step, let's say in your goal, one step behind that is, do you have the profile? If you have the profile, one step behind what? You need a good CAT score. How do you get a good CAT score? By answering, let's say, 30 questions currently, let's say, for example, out of 66. You might have that kind of thing. How do you get to 30 questions? 30 questions, you can say that, okay, I'll focus on the topics first, which give me the best return on time invested, right? So they can be arithmetic, they can be algebra, it can be reading comprehension, it can be database sets, it can be um, so the arrangement-based sets that we get, right? So these are the broad areas that you will tackle. So that is basically your specific goal. So you have to set a goal saying that, okay, in this coming fortnight, 15 days, I will go through each and every formula from module one, let's say. That could be a specific goal. Now, measurable goal, again, module one, 15 days, time bound. Achievable, it is realistic. I'm not saying that you finish four modules in one day, right? And relevant, relevant to your preparation. It is definitely going to translate into something, right? So that is basically the goal that we are talking about. Whenever you have a goal, make sure that you have a specific goal, measurable goal, and achievable relevant time models, right? You can't just say that I will do very well at the CAT. Of course you will, right? But for that, you have to do something, right? So make sure that you are setting very 
logical specific goals and you are not weak in terms of goal setting right now uh, prasad generally does this uh, goal setting session wherein uh, he will talk about what is the timetable that you have to follow what exactly is the score that translates into x percentile the weight of the topics that appear at the test so those things happen in that session but this is basically what that session is meant for right and the last thing is you have to think smart you have to cut out the noise right so a lot of noise goes on when it uh, around you when it comes to cat preparation right uh, a, a lot of questions that i got in the given day uh, right uh, are, are basically what happens outside right uh, is is it necessary for me to leave my job to prepare for the cat because a lot of people will tell you that um, uh, if you want to leave a job uh, leave your job leave your job right uh, now it has got consequences every action that you take in life has consequences uh, when you go to the interview room they are going to ask you as to what you did before uh, you came into that interview room right and if you say that you were sitting and preparing for the test or you give them an answer which tells them that you were sitting and preparing for the test then uh, they will almost certainly ask you the follow up question as to why should they select you over someone who has prepared and worked them at it and that is a very difficult question to answer honestly right because there is no good answer right you can't say that nee i was doing something else in life nee it's a difficult difficult uh, thing to convince people on right also working uh, work working at uh, uh, an organization or working in an organization will give you that cushion right if something goes wrong let's say right uh, god forbid again I, i don't want to bring negativity into your life honestly but uh, anything can happen right uh, so you have to have a plan b in place if you don't have a plan b in place you will always be under that stress ki nahi i have to do well at the test if you are someone who deals very well with stress good for you but most of the people are not very amazing when it comes to dealing with stress so uh, i it's better to not have that sword hangly uh, dangling over your head right so that that is something that you can live without uh, so don't take unnecessary risks make sure that uh, if you are in a position to work go ahead and take up that job if it is becoming unbearable for you make sure that you speak to someone right speak to your batch mentor speak to someone from ims and make sure that you are making a logical decision right so don't don't take rash decisions again people will ask you to uh, do a lot of things uh, by by forcing them on you right they will say that okay you have to read hindu editorials every day right uh, that will ensure that you get 100 percentile in verbal now that is a very easy advice to give because i know people will not be able to sustain most of the people will not be able to sustain job right and that is going to happen so uh, make sure that you cut out the noise don't get into all these discussions around a lot of nonsensical things that go on uh, which i am is going to conduct the test how does it impact the score how does it impact the level of difficulty of the section all these are moot discussions right it doesn't make any sense whatsoever so cut out the noise don't get involved into solving questions that are way beyond the level of difficulty of the cat make sure that your goals are smart in nature right so that is the first takeaway uh, so the next three takeaways are going to be on each of the three sections that we have so the the moral of the story before i tell you the story is that you have to read dense you have to read wide and why is that the case i'll show you a short passage that some of you might have seen if you would have prepared for cat 22 you might have seen this passage right uh, i'll give you 30 seconds one minute just read this and try to make sense of it yeah so more or less that is the amount of time that you are going to get to read this understand this comprehend this and this is basically something that is at least slightly palatable right i have taken a middle paragraph of an actual cat rc passage from cat 21 uh, i think this was cat 21 slot 2 uh, that was the passage that that i have here uh, similar passages appeared in 22 as well so i'm sure that whatever slot you would have been you would have seen this so in my slot it was critical theory of technology if someone uh, took it in slot 1 right in slot 2 it was something else in slot 3 it was something right so uh, this is this is the kind of passage that we are looking at right now if you are able to understand this first reading may brilliant good for you this session is probably not meant for you uh, you are already on a, a good track keep continuing what you are doing right take care that is that is your take away but yeah this is difficult a lot of people will struggle this way. honestly i struggled with this passage right when i was taking the test because when you are taking a test you don't want to read this right you want to read something that makes you happy in life right e k i don't know a uh, colonial situation then something happened non european people came material culture subjugated something 
uh, they get into gender biases and all those things at the end, right? So this is basically a very difficult passage to read. And th these these uh, ellipses that you see, right? Three dots that you see, they were also part of the passage. I have not cut something from the passage. The passage was designed in such a manner that they removed some bits from the original passage, right? So that makes these things difficult. Now, how do you go through this thing, right? So if you look at the overall picture of the VARC section, a typical VARC section at the CAT will comprise of 5,000 words, right? So as I said, 600 to 700 words per passage, four such passages, 2,800 words, add to it the questions that are there, the options that are there, paragraph summary, jumbled paragraphs, sub mila ke 40 minutes ke andar, you have to make sense of 5,000 words and you have to read everything. You can't say that, okay, this is the answer. I'll not read the remaining three uh, uh, options. No, you have to read each and every option and figure out which is the best option, right? So 5,000 words in 40 minutes. Now, all of us are pretty good at math. 5,000 divided by 40 will be 125 words per minute, right? 125 words per minute is the reading speed that is required to crack the cat or at least read the CAT VRC section. The average reading speed is around 200 words per minute qualified as under for topics that you are not familiar with, non-fiction topics mostly. Okay? So non-fiction topics can under average reading speed for a non-native or someone whose first language is not English will be 200 words per minute, roughly. And this is like casual reading, right? no pressure of timer, no career at stake, no interview call to get, right? No silent room in which you are sitting, right? Wherein everybody is focused on cracking the test, right? Waha pe 200 words per minute. Now add the pressure of the time, add the butterflies in your stomach, add the mock performances that you would have uh, uh, put over the last few months, right? And this is a very difficult task to do. So 125 words per minute is a very difficult task to do. Now, how do you improve this? You improve this by going through as many non-fiction topics as you can before you go and sit for the test. I'm not saying that whatever you read will appear at the test. Nee. But I am saying that if you read a lot of different things that you are not comfortable with, the next thing that you read which you are not comfortable with, your brain will be much more receptive to it. And that is basically what we are working towards. So all those people who are not good at VARC, the first thing that you have to do is you have to start reading. If you haven't read anything till now, make sure that you make it a habit to read one book every week. You can take 200 to 300 pages books, right? And you will get a lot of recommendations on sites like, say, Goodreads, right? So Goodreads is uh, essentially a, a forum where people discuss books, right? They read books and they review books and you will be able to uh, see a lot of lists of uh, books that you might actually like, right? You can also go to something like a Reddit, right? So there, uh, at a Reddit, you will basically get a something we call a subreddit, which has books or 52 book, right? So those kind of things you will be able to go through. You will get a lot of good recommendations, right? I will give some recommendations on the next slide, but you can also do these things over and above what I have said. So the rule of thumb, the foundation, the basic thing that you have to do is you have to read a lot. Uske baal, whatever you are doing in class, solving proper reading comprehension questions, solving sim cats, understanding what the logic is according to the person who designed the question, right? So that is basically something that you will develop as you keep on solving questions. But the building block is going to be reading, right? Now, this year, if you look at the topics that uh, that appeared, um, as I was saying, Marx's critical theory of technology, right? It, it is a very complicated thing to understand. Uh, and doing it, doing a test is very difficult, right? Uh, so that was present in my slot. There was a passage on stoicism. Now, if you knew what stoicism is, it would have made your life much easier. But if you don't know what stoicism is, what being stoic means, you have never heard of these people called Zeno or uh, Marcus Aurelius, right? If you haven't heard these names, then you will find it difficult to digest this particular concept. Then there was technical social dualism. I believe it was in the second slot, if I remember correctly, or the third slot, not sure, right? Then there was a uh, passage on musicking, which appeared in the second slot. Uh, there was a passage on oriental literature. I think that was the third slot, not sure. There was a passage on undead. How have we given supernatural powers to the undead and we are scared of them irrespective of having made such long or having taken such long strides when it comes to um, our civilization, right? And uh, the, the development that we have achieved over the last so many years, right? In spite of that, we, we still regard the undead, right? Undead meaning, uh, you can say werewolves, 
ghouls, zombies, right? So all those people undead, right? So that is basically what we're talking. Interesting read, but again, you have to be uh, enthusiastic to read these kind of things, right? And uh, you have to be prepared for a few surprise. So of course, um, a lot of you are preparing for CAT 23. And there was a new question that appeared in CAT 22. So for all those of you who are wondering whether it will, whether you will be taught those things, yes. So it's a part of the flow. So the class flow has been modified by a bit. Uh, in your upcoming modules, you will be seeing a, a chapter or you will be seeing an exercise on um, the question type that appeared in CAT 22. Right. So as I mentioned earlier, it was a fill in the blanks paragraph completion kind of a question type, and that will be taken care of. But you have to be ready to deal with surprises, right? And you you have to you have to maintain that reading speed of 125 words per minute if you want to go through each and every passage otherwise it will invariably happen that there will be a passage that you would not have read or read half-heartedly and you would have left it alone and um, someone else might do it and you might end up messing up your score a bit now in terms of what to read uh, in terms of news you have to pick one source at least and read it thoroughly. Now, I have not put Times of India here. You can do it if that is something that helps you. But make sure that you develop a reading habit. Now, news is very tricky to follow, especially if you have not done anything in the past. So let's say, for example, you are talking about something like the upcoming Gujarat elections, let's say, right? Or the ongoing Gujarat elections, so to say. Now, uh, the, the thing is, you would not know where to start. Right. You will not know what to do when it comes to, let's say, talking about the, the stock market. Right. So Sensex hit uh, an all time high uh, recently. Now, if you have no idea about what this is, it is very difficult to start from the middle. But then again, you have to start from somewhere. Right. So make sure that you take active interest in some things that you are at least somewhat comfortable with and then go ahead and develop a reading habit. So I'm sure a lot of you are. Uh, uh, good at sport, right? Or you like reading about sport, you like, maybe you are following the ongoing World Cup, right? Or you might be following cricket, let's say, for example. So uh, those things you are following currently. Now, once you develop an active interest, you will figure out a way to build on that knowledge, right? You will be able to look at, okay, some YouTube channel, some YouTuber is talking about this thing, I have to read it. There is a very nice article that someone has written somewhere, I need to read it. Google will suggest you articles that might be relevant to you, right? So all those things will happen once you take that activity. So I would strongly suggest that you do it. Um, I have written some sources here. You can pick up one or many or neither, something else, right? That is completely up to you. So I have written about New York Times, Guardian, Aeon, Mint, ET, Money Control, and so on. Uh, Aeon is uh, an important source purely because a lot of cat passages appear from Aeon. Um, so... Uh, one passage that I remember uh, that appeared this year was straight away lifted from uh, Aeon, right? Uh, so that is basically the, the importance of Aeon. Uh, I think it was the one on Marx's uh, critical theory of technology. Yeah. All right. Uh, in terms of casual reading or focused reading, whichever way you want to take it, I've written some uh, sources here. So AL Daily. Project Syndicate, FinShorts, uh, EPW, right? So all these are like very good sources that you can go through. One of them you can go through. I'm not saying go through everything. Uh, in terms of books, some fiction books, some authors I have mentioned. So Wodehouse, Agatha Christie, Sudhamurthy, Ruskin Bond. If you are not very comfortable, you can start with something like an Amish as well. If if it tickles your fancy, you can start with a Chetan Bhagat as well. If that gets you reading books, right? There is anything that gets you reading books, you can start from there. Obviously, you have to graduate. So from there, you have to reach non-fiction books. So I have written some non-fiction books that are not very difficult to read, right? So Atomic Habits, Barking Up the Wrong Tree is a beautiful book. You can read that. Tipping Point, India Unbound talks about the history of India uh, 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 post-independence, uh, right? Uh, the Selfish Gene. So all these are non-fiction books. You can maybe have a look at some of these. And in terms of business, in terms of understanding what specialization you would want to take, so marketing, finance, operations, HR, consulting, uh, IT, whichever uh, specialization you want to take, you also have to read a few things, right? You can't just say that it's a marketing can the branding role karna hai kar, and you don't know what branding role is, right? Or what brands are. So some books that I have mentioned here, you can go through so that so that uh, you develop an acumen. Uh, for business as well. You, you get to see uh, what exactly happens uh, when people are running a business or when they are working in a specific function, right? Uh, I've not written the McKinsey way here. You can go through that. 
I have not written um, uh, the the uh, there's a book on uh, measure what matters, right? So you have to think about uh, uh, things in numerical terms, right? So you can you can read these and you can start. Uh, someone asked, should I read Aeon or uh, should I read books? Uh, so there is no either or that exists, right? You have to read as much as you can. That is the point. Uh, so Aeon articles, maybe you can you can pick up an article. So at some point in time, Aeon articles will be shared with you on a regular basis. Or I'm not sure if that is happening currently uh, for your Telegram group. But at some point in time, it is bound to happen, right? So maybe you can read the Aeon article that is there. Typically, Aeon articles are larger than traditional articles. So 2,500, 3,000, 4,000 words is, is what you get, right? And again, average reading speed, you are bound to take at least half an hour to read and understand that passage, which is decent enough reading, right? Uh, so you can maybe go through Aeon articles, one Aeon article, one editorial every day, or read uh, your newspaper casually, right? And make sure that you are updated with whatever is going on. That is one thing. And uh, reading books, you can maybe keep it as an activity for 20 to 30 minutes every day. So now that you have the time, you can spend 45 minutes to one hour reading every day, and that should be decent enough. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the next section. So a lot of people uh, spoke about being not very good at reasoning, right? Uh, so for those of you who get the Avengers joke, good for you, right? Uh, so a very simple question that I generally ask people, how many logical puzzles can you think of? Or what all logical puzzles can you think of? Okay. I'll give you 30 seconds. Whatever you can think of, you can put it in the chat box and we will see how many puzzles can you come up with. Uh, one easy book, Jatin, uh, if, if you are into Indian mythology, then maybe you can start with something called the Palace of Illusions. Maybe. Uh, again, top of my mind, I can think of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sudoku, Crossword, Chess, Kakuro. I'm very glad that some people know Kakuro because if you knew Kakuro, uh, at least in two different years, Cat Kendall, you could have cracked the logical reasoning puzzle very quickly. Chess, Sudoku, Crossword, yeah. Calcudoku, Cholo good, Swami. I'm very happy to hear that. Sachin, yes, chess is fine. Uh, Shreya, not required. As in. It's too much of an effort to write down the news that you read, right? So not, not required. How to read fast? Uh, so there is there is a there's a topic in your module, speed reading, right? So that is something that will help you. There are some basic tips that will help you read. And if you forget while you're reading something, then that is basically what we're training for. That, that is exactly what uh, will come out of your reading habit, right? So once you read a lot of things, you will be able to retain things as well. You have to build that muscle. Memory. Okay. So some logical puzzles I got from people, yeah, flow free number sticks is, is what we got uh, last two entries. So this is basically what I had written, right? And uh, this, this is just top of my mind. Obviously there are a lot more than these. So Sudoku, Kakuru, Kakuro, Kakurasu, Hitori, Hidato, Tower of Hanoi, Chess, Unlock Me. Some people might have heard about Wordle. That was a rage uh, sometime in the middle of this year, right? Uh, Bulls and Cows is the mathematical puzzle on which Wordle is based. Um, uh, Minesweeper, all those old users of uh, Windows would know about Minesweeper, Solitaire, right? Uh, so, so there are a lot of, lot of puzzles that I have written here. Now, the whole idea is how do you get better at reasoning? Now, I'm not talking about how to crack Venn diagrams or how to crack critical path questions, how to crack binary logic questions. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about knowing a lot of things, right? I don't expect you to be the, uh, to play Sudoku or solve Sudoku at a national level. No, I'm not talking about it. I'm simply talking about you being able to comprehend a lot of puzzles, being able to solve these puzzles. So Kalko, if I give you a Kakuro puzzle, I'm talking about easy or moderate levels. I'm not talking about very difficult Kakuro puzzles, easy or moderate level puzzles. You should be able to solve them. I mean, I'm not saying you should be able to solve them in two minutes. No, I am saying you should be able to solve them. Now, as soon as you are able to solve one puzzle type, go to the next puzzle type and try to learn as many puzzle types as you can. How will this help you? Whenever it comes to the logical reasoning section, you need to have a logical point or you need to start from somewhere. If you don't have an origin, right, you will be going in a lot of different places and then you end up getting confused. 
then you end up making a lot of different scenarios and those scenarios are not mutually exclusive cumulatively exhaustive वैसे scenario बनते ही नहीं है right and then you start thinking ये भी possible है this is also possible that is also possible then there are four things that happen in your head nothing you can write on paper and then it becomes disastrous right uh, that is basically what we want to avoid these puzzles or solving these puzzles will tell you that there is going to be a starting point to every solution there is going to be a unique solution at some point in time if there are two different cases then how to handle those two different cases right so these puzzles will help you get better at those things right and that is why i have put it as you have to get or you have to be able to solve as many logical reasoning puzzles as you can these puzzles come in cat no but then again as in you you can't prepare for cat by just solving questions right you have to develop a mindset and how do you develop a mindset by having good building blocks these are the building blocks of most of the puzzles that appear at the cat so sudoku is a foundation when it comes to solving arrangement based questions in a way right kakuro can be a foundation when it comes to splitting things into smaller parts so if i have to divide 12 into four parts such that there is at least one in each part and no two parts are equal to each other there are only two ways of doing it and if you know this that 6 3 2 1 and 5 4 2 1 are the only two ways of doing this you have saved at least 2 to 3 minutes right and that is like gold dust when it comes to the cat so this is what we are talking about uh, a lot of people are scared of di because it is unknown right so fear of the unknown will definitely lead to panic during the test definitely it's going to happen if you have not solved uh, a lot of puzzle types if you have not solved a lot of lrdi sets you are going to be uh, thrashed when it comes to the cat right that is definitely going to happen so make sure that you know a lot of different puzzle types okay now being technically sound helps is from the perspective of quant right uh, so in a lot of situations if you know a concept if you know a formula if you know a shortcut you will be able to solve it extremely quickly say for example those of you who are on your third module or who have gone ahead of uh, uh, the, your flow or you who generally know this concept there is a very simple concept two people start from opposite ends of a, a a linear path both of them walk towards each other they cross each other cross karne ke baad let's say this person reaches the end point after 4 hours after they meet this person reaches the end point 9 hours after they meet right then their speeds are in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so 4 is to 9 is the ratio of the time Re uh, reciprocal leke root nikal do so root of 9 by 4 or 3 by 2 that is the ratio of the speeds now if you knew this particular formula if you knew the shortcut cat 2021 ke andar there was one question that you could have attempted in 20 seconds 20 second mein aata hai question but if you don't know this concept you try to derive it on the day of the test one you are going to get extremely confused because the derivation is not straight okay and the second thing is you will spend two and a half three minutes solving this whereas the other person has solved it in 20 seconds right and that is basically where the edge lies right so knowing shortcuts formulas having seen similar questions beforehand will give you those extra 5 minutes 7 minutes right and i showed you earlier right the quant section uh, the the kind of percentiles and scores that people get now 5 minutes on a base of 40 is 12.5% you can't even imagine as in you are starting with an advantage of 12 to 11.5% right now in 5 minutes if you are good enough you will be able to solve two three extra questions and two three extra questions will give you those six to nine marks and that is a huge advantage six to nine marks at any level will take you to the next percentile wala bracket for sure right and that is basically how being technically sound helps so make sure that you know all the formulas that you learn in your class exercises all the shortcuts that um, that are that are um, shown to you right uh, if you haven't seen this wonderful blog called cat 100 percentile maybe you might want to have a look at it uh, it is written and uh, uh, maintained by scrabbler if you don't know who scrabbler is you you got to know it right uh, so cat 100 percentile is a wonderful resource from where you will be able to see a lot of these shortcuts and formulas that i'm talking about right um, so yeah you can you can just google cat 100 percentile or you can google scrabbler you will be able to find the 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 website the blog right uh, friendliness with numbers is key so i spoke about it briefly in the previous slide as well so i spoke about kakuro kakura uh, kakuro kakura zu yes sudoku yes 
right? Uh, bulls and cows. You have to be extremely friendly with numbers. You can't say that, achha, numbers are I'm not very good with numbers. No. Uh, if you want to become a good manager, you have to be good at numbers. Even if you do marketing or HR or whichever field you feel has got nothing to do with numbers, you still have to be good with numbers, right? Uh, so you have to be friendly with numbers. So being friendly with numbers is key. And uh, uh, that that is basically something that is going to help you uh, throughout your journey, right? Uh, so, jitna jitna you are familiar with number, uh, jitna calculations you can do at the back of your uh, uh, hand, or you can you can you can just remember a lot of things that will be good better for you. So, kya karna chahiye? You should know your reciprocals, factorials, squares, cubes, basic formulas, a a cube plus b cube, a cube minus b cube. Uh, a raised to n plus b raised to n, a raised to n minus b raised to n ka factorization, right? So all those things, if you are able to remember basic formulas, you should be good to go. Uh, benchmark is that when you look at your class exercise or uh, when you look at your material, whatever has been put in gray, there will be gray boxes all, all throughout your material, right? Jo bhi gray box kandar, that is basically your um, formula sheet, right? That you have. So uh, if you remember all the gray boxes, brilliant you will be able to make sense of a lot of these shortcuts that I'm talking about. Okay. Then you will realize this when it comes to the SIM cards because in a lot of SIM cards, in a lot of tests that you're going to take, there will be alternative solutions. So don't accept one solution and move on saying that, okay, this is the ultimate reality and this is basically what it should be. No, try to think about alternative linkages. So there might be time speed distance questions that also require an, or that can be solved in an easier manner using the concept of allegation, right? So all these things will, will help you. So once you start with your SIM card, once you go through your SIM cards, well, you will be able to think of these interlinkages that exist within uh, different topics. Right, so that is basically what I had for quant. Now uh, we spoke about the sections, we spoke about the overall goal setting. Now, the whole idea is for you to have a balanced preparation strategy, meaning that you can't keep on strengthening your strengths and ignoring your weaknesses, right? There are no favorites when it comes to the cat. You are not here to have fun, right? Again, I, I want you to have fun when you're preparing, but the moral of the story is we are not here for uh, uh, enjoying ourselves, right? We, we are here to solve a test at the end of it. Whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever has been told to you, it's a test that wherein there are questions that you have to solve, right? So that is basically what we intend to do. So there are no favorites there, right? Even if you hate permutations and combinations, you have had uh, a lot of difficulty when it comes to permutations and combinations. If there is an easy question, you have to kill it. As simple as that, right? So there are no favorites when it comes to the test. You should not ignore your weaknesses. If you have a weakness, try to address it as quickly as you can. If you keep on delaying your weaknesses, it will become a, a major issue at the end. And in September or October, you might start regretting as to having that weakness, right? So don't ignore your weaknesses. You have got a lot of time. 12 months is more than enough to prepare for the test, right? So time make sure that you're working on your weaknesses throughout. Progress in a linear manner. Don't jump from one thing to the other. Make sure that your concepts are in place before you take the test. When I say pro concepts are in place, doesn't mean that you finish your syllabus pura ka pura because that is again not going to happen, right? Uh, there is no syllabus that is defined for CAD. What we are doing is indicate, right? Um, so make sure that you have gone through all the concepts that you have been taught uh, throughout your modules and uh, make sure that you are progressing in a linear manner. Don't take a test and then start looking at the concept, right? It is not going to help. Uh, you have to progress in a linear manner. Pele your learn wala part comes, then practice comes, then test comes. So make sure that you know the concepts, then you know the application, and you know the test taking strategy. Okay? So concepts ke pele, test pe mat jump karna, test pe jump karne ke baad, concepts pe mat aana, Right? So it, it works in both ways. Get your my plans done regularly. So a lot of you have personalized queries in terms of how to build my profile from where to get time to prepare for the test, whether I am doing a good job or not, which colleges to target, will my profile get me into those colleges, right? So all those things can be addressed through my plans. So make sure that you get your my plans done regularly. Uh, get in touch with your center mentors. Uh, if you don't have slots available, ask them to open slots. And uh, that is something that will help you understand your preparation in a better way. The next, the next lesson is simulation gives you your edge, right? Uh, you have to plan ahead of time. You have to understand all the scenarios, all the things that can go wrong, 
that might go right, your strengths, your weaknesses, everything you should know. Right? So when we're talking about simulation, we're talking about SIMCATs in this particular context. Right? Uh, there is a very strong correlation between the, the number of SIMCATs that someone takes, the percentile that someone gets at the SIMCAT and his or her actual CAT score. And we have been, we have been looking at tons of SIMCAT scores year on year. We do our analysis, regression analysis, sub kuch karke, we establish uh, certain correlations between uh, what people are doing at the SIMCAT and the actual uh, test. And there's a very strong correlation, honestly, right? Uh, so whatever you are scoring at the SIMCAT is bound to reflect in your actual CAT percentile as well. So my uh, suggestion in this regard is that your cutoff date should be June 23. Now, June 23 meaning June of next year, uh, because that is when your SIMCATs will start in full flow. And you want to be mentally prepared. You want to be prepared in terms of concepts when it comes to the SIMCATs. And that's why I'm saying that by June 23, make sure that all your concepts are in place. Right. So that is the cutoff that I'm talking about. Now, SIMCATs, as I said, will be key when it comes to cracking it. If you have not taken these seriously, if you have, uh, if you have uh, sort of, uh, again, if you, if you have uh, been avoiding SIMCATs or if you have been waiting for your syllabus to get over uh, so that you start taking SIMCATs, then that is that is going to mostly lead in a disaster, right? So make sure that you're taking the SIMCATs uh, as and when they are intended to be taken, right? We release it at a, a predefined, um, uh, in, a, in a predefined manner, staggered manner. So make sure that you are taking it as per that schedule, right? Use the video solution. So all the SIM cards have video solutions and uh, obviously we learn better through videos. Uh, good, uh, the good, uh, good thing that has been happening for you will happen for you is that practice exercises are going to have video solutions as well at some point in time. So make sure that you use these resources, right? Because these are very difficult to, to, uh, to get, right? Curated videos, uh, talking about alternative solutions and so on, right? Uh, SIMCATs, we introduced a new feature for these uh, for this season wherein it was AI adaptive uh, practice based, right? So AI based adaptive practice wherein uh, there, there was a bit of AI that came up with a question which was similar to the question that you had solved at the SIMCAT. And when I say similar, it doesn't mean that number change kar diya, naam change kar diya. Uh, the, it was not the case. The entire question gets modified in such a way that it is unrecognizable uh, compared to the original question and you have to think deeper. Right? And unless you achieve competence at that particular question type, it will not allow you to go ahead. Right, So that is basically something cutting edge uh, that, that a lot of students this year experienced. Uh, so that is again something that uh, you, you might be able to make use of in a better manner. So make sure that you are, you are tuned in when it comes to the resources that you have. Okay. And the last point that I have here is you have to be flexible. Right, uh, People ask very rigid questions. How many hours should I prepare for? Which book should I read? Uh, uh, which test should I take, right? Will having XYZ profile guarantee me something? No, there are no guarantees in life, right? Uh, there are people who have not read even one article from the Hindu and have got a 100 percentile at the CAD verbal section. There are people who read Hindu every day, day in, day out, and they're still not able to cross 90 percentile in verbal ability reading comprehension section. There are people who are IIT graduates who are not very good at maths. They exist. Not many exist, but they do. Right. There are people who come from non-engineering backgrounds and are extremely good at math. They also exist. So there is place for everyone, right? There is place for every scenario. So you have to be flexible. You have to you have to understand what it takes to crack the test first of all, and you have to you have to have plans in your head. You have to have alternative uh, plans in place, right? So you have to reevaluate your goals regularly. So just because you started with the dream of getting into ABC doesn't mean that you will get into ABC, right? At some point in time, if you feel that you need to slightly look at a broader picture, you might also want to include, say, an FMS or an XLRI into the mix. You might also want to take an NMAT or a SNAP to, to keep your options open. So be it, right? There is no harm in doing that. Similarly, if you, I have seen people who have started with the goal of getting into a college because it was very close to their house, right? And I have, I have heard this literally from a lot of people this person ended up getting into a much better college. So you have to reevaluate your goals regularly, either upwards or downwards, but keep on doing that, right? Keep on asking yourself, are you on track? Are you focused on your goal? Is your goal realistic, right? And then you can maybe reevaluate or you can keep it constant. No harm at all. Keep a track of your progress. At any point in time, if I ask you, what is it that you've done in the last one month, you should be able to answer. Right. In a lot of your 
roles post your mba you will have monthly reviews right you will have meetings wherein you will have to talk about the work that you have done in the previous month the work that you are going to do in the next month why should prep be any different right if you are planning to get into the corporate why not start now so you have to keep a track of your progress now nobody is going to come and ask you ki acha oh did, uh, how much did you work this month oh you didn't work very hard this month we will not give you your bonus wo sab nahi hone wala right you you have to be your boss you have to basically be your critic uh you have to basically be your cheer leader so you are playing a lot of different roles right so you have to keep a track of your progress you have to ensure that uh, you are progressing in a paced manner if there is something that you are critical about criticize yourself maybe punish yourself hold back that treat right delay gratification so all these things will help you achieve success in the long run right focus on admats as well additional management admission tests right make sure that you are focusing on those as well because one bad day should not lead to a year getting wasted if cat doesn't happen focus on this act that doesn't happen focus on the ift as well nmats nap there is a cmat there is a test net there is a mycat there is a cet right all these exams happen so again once you reevaluate your goals make sure that you are also focusing on the admats and admats require a slightly different skill set compared to the cat right there is an element of grammar vocabulary critical reasoning right so all those things come into the picture so make sure that you are equipped to deal with admats as well read outside of test prep as i mentioned news is important not because uh, question gk question gk ka koi question aayega but there are some exams that have a gk section so iift has a gk section my cat might have a gk section cmat might have a gk section right uh, snap one fine day they might uh, decide to put a gk section right so ye sab cheeze ho sakti there is going to be a vat round after you are written test right when you will have to write an essay you can't write an essay based on thoughts and feels right you have to back it up with data you have to back it up with examples that is basically where your casual reading will come into the picture so newspaper news readings or editorials whatever you are reading will help you form opinions when it comes to these processes after your test or even during your test in some situations okay focus on the profile if you can so some people ask which certifications should i do again there is no one answer there are a lot of certifications that exist one you have to understand what is the specialization that you are going to go for so if you are planning to go for marketing you might want to do a certification on digital marketing let's say or you might want to do a, a certification on uh, again you can you can talk about uh, marketing research let's say for example you might want to do a certification on excel how to handle excel things tableau you might want to do something on you might want to do something on product management let's say for example right um, sales force management let's say for example so all these things exist right a consumer behavior let's say so there are a lot of certifications a lot of courses that are available and if you are interested in marketing that is the list that i spoke up if you are interested in finance then we can talk about things like financial accounting management accounting risk management derivatives right there are a lot of things financial modeling courses again excel tableau everything uh, comes into play right so you might want to read up on this when it comes to hr same thing recruitment training all those things basically come into the picture right so ye ye sab cheezon pe you have to focus now how will you know these things exist when you read more about the specializations that you intend to simply because there is a black friday uh, there, there is a uh, christmas sale or some black friday sale somewhere doesn't mean that you go and buy those courses make sure that you know why you want to buy that particular course because just going through that course and producing a certificate will not tell them that you are good at it. they will ask you cross questions uh, the panelists the your interviewers right and uh, what if you play paint a sad picture then it's not going to be very encouraging for them so make sure that you know your stuff inside out only then you put it on your cv right for that you need to have genuine interest operations karna to maybe a six sigma certification might be slightly expensive but yes why not right so ye sab cheeze if you do then you will see your profile being built now is it necessary to build your profile not really your first goal should be to get into the interview room if you burden yourself with so many things that you are not able to focus on test prep and are not able to get a good score what use is your cv going to be right uska koi fayda nahi hai that year. right so make sure that you are focusing on your if you are in your college college exams is your top priority because they happen only once hopefully in your lifetime second priority is test prep then if you have time energy enthusiasm ye sab agar tumhare paas hai then go for profile building activities 
don't start doing profile building activities just because you can right make sure that you are prioritizing well and that is basically the last bit that i have right so for profile development can these things i'm talking about now courses is one thing i spoke about certifications yes you can also focus on internships you can also focus on research papers you can also focus on hobbies i know someone i know a student who got through smhrd and that student had done a course on comparative mythology for Mumbai University, right? So it could be anything. It could be anything that that uh, keeps you interested that you can talk about confident, right? So worry about the content. Uh, if you are planning to go for the specialization, otherwise you can purely focus on your hobby and generate a, a talking point during the interview. All right, Chalo, so I'll end the meeting now. We have already, already overshot our mandate. Uh, I hope the, the session was useful to you. There, there will be these kind of sessions that will keep on happening. So don't worry if your questions have not been answered. Uh, there will definitely be a way to get those, uh, those questions answered. So yeah, all the best, everyone. Uh, enjoy your evening. Uh, enjoy your weekend. And uh, I hope to see you again in some other session. Right. So till then, take care, everyone. Stay safe. And uh, all the best with the preparation. Thank you.